public level two EV charging stations like this are amazing and we need more of them. But there's a problem with the cables and how they tend to be managed. And we think as a company, as Cool Street, making charges for people who park on the street, that there's some really unique solutions to managing the cable better. So let's talk about the problems and then we'll get into a little bit of the solutions. So this blink station here, the cables just end up coiled around the charger, that's the design. But the design that works itself out is they all end up on the ground and you can tell they tend to get damaged there. They also don't look very nice just trailing on the ground like a snake or garden hose or something like that. Others like this charge point unit have much better cable management, but they tend to be quite a bit larger. Uh, you can tell this thing is a little bit bigger, a little bit more industrial looking, not something that you would want in my street side location by my house, and also something that tends to be bigger, more expensive. There's a lot of issues with having a nice cable management system. It does keep the cable off the ground. It does make it a lot neater in that way, but this doesn't apply in a lot of situations. So let's talk about the maintenance and actually the durability concerns here. And I've seen this a lot on public level two chargers. They'll have a broken handle, they'll have a broken cable. Cables break a lot and having them on the floor like this one is also doesn't help. And then when they do need to be fixed, the technician has to basically tear the thing apart to unplug the cable, put a new cable on. It takes a lot of time, costs a lot of money. These things might be down for days and might not be something that somebody wants to repair. I don't want you to think that I hate level two public chargers. I don't, I really like them. I think that we need more things like this. And honestly, in a garage like this, this is a really good situation. We need to see more of this. I just think that there is a better way. And if we look at Europe, we can start to see a little bit of what that better way looks like. In Europe, the convention is to take the cable off the level two charger, something like this. And they use what's called a type two connector here or a Menikes connector that will plug into a socket on the charger. And then the other end can be either another type two, which is what they use in Europe, or it can be something like AJ1772 here or a Tesla Nax. And so then you can kind of have a universal adapter cable thingy. And it ends up being really cool because when you look at places like Denmark, Norway, England, you start seeing all of these really nice detachable cable solutions. They just pop these things up on the street. The cable clutter is gone. Now, granted, some of these chargers are still really big and kind of ugly, but others are built into lamp posts and pretty much just hide everywhere. And so the Europeans really have figured out this detachable cable thing. So now the neat things with this cable, for one, there's different sizes of cables based on the current that you want to charge your vehicle at. So you can get like a 16 amp cable, really thin, and then a resistor in the handle will tell the charger, this is a 16 amp cable. Do not let the vehicle pull more than 16 amps. This here's the 32 amp cable. It's a nice thin cable. The resistor in this guy tells the charger, don't let the car charge at more than 32 amps. So they have these safety features built into this guy. The other thing is this guy will lock onto the charger and there's these little divots in the cable. That's kind of important because you don't wanna be pulling these hot out of a charger. That tends to lead to arcing and things like that on the pins will wear them out more quickly. It can also be kind of dangerous. So you wanna lock these guys onto the charger if at all possible. You can do things with the J1772 and its latch mechanism to create a safe disconnect without an actual lock lock, but a lock is always a little bit better in that regard. Speaking of locking, since it's locking, you know, you have less chance of people walking up and just stealing a thing off of the charger. So when you look at the differences between the European model and the American attached cable options that I just showed off, you can kind of see that for public level two charging, removing the cable has some huge benefits. I, I didn't even mention the benefits with regards to the maintenance and the reliability. So by taking the cable off when it's not being used, it's not laying on the ground, which means it's not getting stepped on. It's not in the weather. There's all these other things that are improved on the maintenance and reliability side. Also, if the cable does break, you just buy a new cable and put it on. You don't have maintenance technicians having to go out, tear the charger apart, put a cable on. It's more on the driver, yes, but these are like a hundred, two hundred dollar cables. These are relatively inexpensive and they're well taken care of. When you're not using these guys, they just live in your trunk of your car or in the frunk if you have a frunk. And these guys stay out of the weather for the majority of the time. They're not being used for the majority of the time. They're not out there to be stolen for the majority of time. Yeah, it, it's just a nice way to keep a cable. Plus it's your own personal cable, not using somebody else's gross 
cable or it doesn't have random substances on it that you don't want to touch. There's just a lot of advantages to having this cable. Now, I'm rambling and probably a lot of you are thinking through this and you're going, wait, 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 Josh, why don't we just use a NEMA 1450 charger? And this is a really good question. This is something I've actually considered quite a bit. In the United States today, our cars do not come with a detachable cable. What they do come with is a charger of some sort. So my car comes with a level one 120 volt charger, a trickle granny charger. A lot of cars will come with a 240 volt charger that can plug into something like this, a NEMA 1450 outlet. And the NEMA 1450 outlet is great. You can go up to 40 amps of charging and it works pretty well. And a lot of people use this every day. There's quite a few problems with 1450 charging. Uh, let me just touch on a couple of those. Number one, these outlets aren't made to be reliably plugged into and out of many, many times. They're made for stoves and things like that, where you plug the stove in and it'll sit there for a decade at a time until you get a new stove and then you replace it. Uh, these guys you might be plugging in and out all the time and that will quickly wear them out and a lot of people have burn up outlets. Just go search online. You'll see all kinds of videos of burnt 1450 outlets. You can get industrial outlets that are better made. I highly recommend that if you're gonna go that route, but it's still an outlet. The flat blades aren't really, really designed for 10,000 insertions or removals. In contrast, the pins on a detachable cable charger like this are round, and these are made for 10,000 or more insertions and removals. So these guys have a really good lifespan compared to the flat blades on a NEMA 1450. So there is no lock on these guys. You can remove them hot which means there's significant safety concerns there. Also, the pins are not encapsulated like they are in the dedicated charge cables. So when you're putting them in or out, there is exposed live blades there. The 1450 outlets aren't really weather sealed. You can put a cover on them, but the actual pins and all that kind of stuff are not weather sealed like they are on a detachable cable socket. So you have more weather sealing concerns. Also, GFCI. So a 1450 outlet needs to have GFCI protection on it when it's used in an outdoor environment or a garage or a basement, things like that. And so you need to put that on the circuit breaker and the charger that you'll plug into it also has GFCI in it. And the interplay between those two uh, can lead to nuisance trips and nuisance trips are not fun when you wake up and your car is not charged. The other thing, a NEMA 1450 charger is about twice the price of a detachable cable. So, you know, $250, $300. And so you're looking at much more expensive units to replace. If it gets stolen, if it gets yanked off of your outlet, if it gets destroyed for some reason. And so the only reason for a 1450 outlet today is that the chargers exist. Now, in the United States, the proportion of EVs out of the total vehicles out there is very, very small. And this means that the market is still really new. And so there is still a chance for us to come up with some new things and innovate here. And I would hope that as we go forward, we will start seeing more detachable cables. And if we get enough detachable cables, what will happen is maybe the manufacturers will start including them with their vehicles. And I think that's a really great world that we should be driving towards. So this is a lot of the reasons why we both developed and have stuck with a detachable cable for our EV charger for people who park on the street. And really, you know, we've thought about the 1450. We've looked at different plug designs. We've worked through a bunch of different things over the years, and we've really <laughs> settled on one thing for sure, and that's that a detachable cable is what we should be using in North America. Now, for residential units like we have here on residential streets, we think it's super important, both from the form factor aspect of it, as well as just the cable reliability. But more than that, we think that it works really well here. And the reason for that is I'm using this charger. I will get a cable with my charger when I buy it, or you can if you buy a cool street unit in the future, and you'll have that cable. Now, why is that important? 
So if a city puts these out downtown along their parking meters, people today in the United States will not have a detachable cable to plug into it. And this would be a big concern because people would drive up to a charger, they'd say, oh, how do I plug into this public charger? I don't have a cable, I guess I can't use it. If you have a charger at your house that comes with a cable and that's the charger you use, it's really easy to solve this. You just have that cable. And if your neighbors are always nearby and they wanna use it as well, they can get that cable. And so we think in residential neighborhoods, whether it's a neighborhood context, whether it's a multifamily, whether it's a condo, anything like that, it makes it so much easier to transition to detachable cables because the people will get the cables if they need the charging there. And then in the future, what that does is it enables building out of a network of people who have cables. And then hopefully, at some point, we reach this critical scale where everybody more or less has cables and we can start deploying all these innovative solutions downtown for people who need to charge in public settings. And all of a sudden, detachable cables are everywhere and we have a much, much cleaner, more durable, more long lasting EV charging solution for everybody everywhere. And that's really what we're about here at Cool Street. And I will see you guys in the next video.